Hello everyone, Antisel here, back with another game for Hearts of Iron 4. Everyone is hyped over Arms Against Tyranny, but this is one of my last videos in the old system that I will bring out, and we'll look at the achievements for Poland. Specifically, no more partitions and the bearer of artillery. That's right, I am the 16th YouTuber to do a tutorial on how to get the bear. I'm going to do so as Monarchist Poland, not uh, with the not-so-secret Romanov path, but with King Michael of Romania. Stay tuned. We'll start with some setup for civilian factories, after that it will be a mill spam. Research-wise, we'll start with the basics and branch out later. Things to look out for are to keep your uh, radios up to speed a little. Industry, of course, artillery is very important for this run. And since we'll be using medium flame tanks, the medium tank chassis is needed as well. For medium tanks, uh, flame tanks, we also need the engineer company too. And you need to keep your infantry equipment up to date and get trucks. Got all that. We'll start some production lines of artillery and anti-air, just one factory each, and put the rest on guns for now. Maybe a second one on, on support equipment, we do need a lot of that eventually. Focus-wise, the Polish Focus 3 is uh, quite massive, but it will fold into itself a little later. We need to assemble the Regency Sun Council, which will take care of a few of these bran branches. We'll do Regency Council first and fulfill the 5th of November Act. That will start the event chain to get ourselves a new king. And after that we will have to take care of the peasant strike, which means I will do a four-year plan, school of mathematics as a detour, then the railway gaps and agrarian reform. And after that we'll have a look at our king. I'm not going to be using this army for a while, so I'm going to redirect him to the capital. Convert them all to the standard infantry template. Go up to speed 5. Consolidate these guys to uh, about 17 divisions and just exercise them to get some starting experience. That's the setup. We're not doing any early wars. We're going for King Michael of Romania. I believe it is the most difficult king to uh, get a grasp of. Yes, you become very strong, but you have no early war goals, so you are on limited conscription once the Soviet Union hits. We will be using the standard method of doing no more partitions, which means giving away Danzig to the Germans when they ask for it. That will give them get them off our backs, at least for a while. And then gear up for war with the Soviets. We will defeat the Soviets and, incidentally, declare a war on Iran to get more requirements for the Bearer of Artillery achievement. We will also get a spy agency to really get going in the Soviet Union. We want max collaboration. I don't want to have to walk all the way to the Urals. That's the 5th of November and we're going for the four-year plan. Friedrich Christian, we have another in mind. And the School of Mathematics. Do note that for your plan gives you a bonus for construction research, which means that after construction one, you can easily go into construction two. The Habsburgs candidate, and we desire another. The Habsburgs king is, of course, another achievement, but I think it's more suited for a completely different campaign with Poland. So we'll just do those separately. I already did a video on that, actually. Habsburgs will get you Czechoslovakia. And is an excellent path to take on Germany first. First 150 PP and we'll get the noble bureaucrat, our first silent workhorse. Crown Prince Michael of Romania. Uniting our thrones, a splendid idea. And here he is, the handsome devil. Let's first get rid of the peasant strike. And we will use our freshly found 
research slot for the trucks. For political power, we'll be saving up some right now for the decisions to get Romania. Later on, we will do partial mobilization, extensive conscription, and an army chief. Fill the railway gaps and agrarian reform. 150 BP. Uh, we're getting enough political power to allow us partial mobilization. And that's the peasant strike. Lots of good industry focuses here, but first we need to do some politicking. Restoration of the Royal Same. Same. Seek internal Romanian support. Our next. And a Soviet spy. Let's get to work in Russia. Since we'll be doing some stuff with trucks and tanks, it's a good idea to keep up with fuel refining. Seek internal Romanian support. We can skip Royal Guards, they only give us two Polish units. We need to do arm monarchist militants and then we can do the coup. But first we need to do some clicking. Monarchist sentiment for 50 PP is a good one. You can use the guns decisions, but invest in Romania and especially sway Romanian generals are the best ones here. And if you get more generals and take a little longer, ah, that's fine. The Russian spy has reached 50%. Go quiet Intel Network and get to work on the first collaboration government. These things are expensive, but well worth it. Our Monarchist Militants is done. We need to do some more decisions here. So we'll dive into our industry branch. There's another research slot here, which requires us to go through here. So we'll go in that direction first. National Defense Fund is very good for building up, but I'd like to make use of this once I have the Romanian factories. So I'll delay that and go the other way first. New Polish industry. We need more than 50 factories. We'll get those eventually. And we'll do the old Polish region. Claim strength 70. I'm doing free decisions. Good should get us to 100. 100 claim strength, so we'll go back to the right and King Michael's coup. 45% collaboration, that doesn't always happen, but it's a very nice bonus. Let's get back in there. It's about time to go for the 1938 mediums. And now we can spend our political power again. We need an army chief. We need extensive conscription, and here is King Michael's coup. That usually doesn't take too long. We can wait a few days, see what happens. Romania was annexed, and now we can merge the internal governments and get it all. 35 experience, and I'm getting professional officer corps. Merge the internal governments is done. I want to go through this path as well. This one is especially interesting for 15% political power gain, so we'll start with that. Demand Slovakia will give you a free Slovakia. And Restore Poland Hungary will give you a personal union with Hungary, with, with which you can then do nothing. But at least they will join the Axis. Do note that for these two, you need a certain amount of troops in the field. So let's get on that. We have some armies. They're usually the very big template. Even with extensive conscription, we're not going to fill this front line with nine uh, battalion infantries. So we're going to need a new template. Romanians have a small template here that we'll use as a basis. I'll just use it for my reserve template, in which I, the icon which I always use. We need to guard this very long border with the Soviet Union. They'll eventually influence Latvia and Lithuania, so we need to guard those borders as well. Don't need to guard Danzig, we'll be giving it away. And we'd be stupid not to use port guards on these ports, so we'll need that as well. 
I'm just dividing these armies along the border. I'm not a fan of field marshal orders, so it's like that. I'm going to use the Romanian cavalry for port guards. I'm also going to train a few motorized divisions, which will be my poor man's tank divisions later on. And finally, we need one more reserve army to guard Lithuania. Yeah, these deficits aren't so bad, but these are the small templates and we still need to expand them. 175, we'll do free trade for now, because we finally have ports. And that means we probably need to get some steel from Sweden. Institute Royal Dictatorship is done and we'll get back here as soon as we can. Now that we have the Romanian industry as well. I'm going to take this one first, Congressional Factories, and then National Defense Fund, and then the fifth research slot. 150 BP will go to extent limited conscription. National Defense Fund. Put these uh, 12 low-level cavalry divisions on the ports. Actually, I have a cavalry officer. 1938, already researching engineers too for my flame tanks. And we're going to do a round of improved worker conditions. We are still a bit low on stability. National Defense Fund is done. We'll do the fifth research slot and then rake up some more factories. A thing to really keep an eye on at this point because we're spiraling out of control in terms of factories is this focus here between the seas concept as soon as we're strong enough to do this we're going to take it it will allow us to get some faction members and that's just strong i really like to get turkey into my faction because that will force the soviets to disperse their troops and another collaboration is done more. Let's have another look at the infantry templates. They don't need to be a reserve. I'm going to make them 10 width at first. Support anti air engineers. So let's see, yeah, for sure. Um, support artillery as well. And that's it for now. The flame tanks will be added later, and that will be our template. Maybe go for a 6th Infantry Battalion, not sure about that yet. The motorized division needs some additions as well. And they'll need a lot of trucks to fill this one up. We have done with our political power what we need to do. Some interesting things to do is the consumer goods guy, which I like to get. There's also an elusive gentleman and a war industrialist. Between the Seas concept is also ready. So we'll get on that immediately. Originally, this will create a faction with Romania, who no longer exists. And we can now get alliance with the Baltic states which would negate our problems in the Baltics. We can also head down here to Turkey, and we still need to get Slovakia and Hungary. So much to do. Hmm. Oh, It cancelled. Well, we'll just have to wait until we get a little stronger, so get more factories. Invest in Eastern Poland, yeah sure. So Dateland has happened, which means we will also improve relations with Czechoslovakia. I'm going to nicely ask for Slovakia next. Engineer Company 2, well, we're already doing all the producing, let's get more fuel refining. 
And let's get our basic medium flame tank up and running. You need to select flamethrowers, then the flame support company. And after that, you can make it as cheap as possible. Extra ammunition storage is cheap, but it lowers your reliability, but just switch to diesel engines, uh, bogus suspension. It's almost for free, but not entirely. You only need a few factories on it. Invest in Eastern Poland, we'll immediately get that focus demand Slovakia. Now that that window is open, you don't want to be asking the Germans for it. We'll ask the Czechs. That's Slovakian Slovakia. I can't believe that worked. I've done this a hundred thousand times and I've never seen it fail. Let's see, can we now go back to the Miesimore? Yeah, well, we'll try again. Cancel my trades for the time being to have more factories. We're also now occupying. So we'll set up the local police force. We can release Slovakia as a puppet, which would give us a nice border state with Germany right after demand Czechoslovakia. And that will save us the trouble of occupying it. I'm going to hold off switching to the more expensive guns while I still have a deficit. And I need to see how many flame tanks I need to upgrade this template. 2000. And there's the between the seas concept. Let's immediately go for an alliance with the Baltic states. Italy joined the German Reich and the Germans are coming for us. We have nothing on our border. We'll just be giving stuff away there. Alliance with the Baltic states and treaty with Lithuania is next. And Estonia and Latvia accept. We'll improve relations with Lithuania. We don't want this to fail, but they usually accept. I'm going to restore Poland Hungary now. And Lithuania accepts. We can uh, now spot plot that reserve army here to protect these guys. We have enough flame tanks to expand the template. Well, almost anyway. Danzig or war? Let's make a deal. Maybe it'll turn elsewhere. Sad, but we'll get it back. Do take note of this event. Working with the Soviets is preferable. It's just an opinion factor while working with the Axis will give you daily fascism support. You really don't want that to happen the entire game. The bottom option. If you think Tanwif is a bit um, a little, you can go to 12 with, put in an extra battalion. You have the manpower for it. You just don't have the guns. I'm going to do it. I'll fill it up somehow. Germans go over Belgium. There is no world war yet, it seems. France was guaranteeing them. And they joined the Allies. The war is on. We also severely lack trains. It's not that we didn't have enough deficits. Restore Poland to Hungary. Lots of Mizumora back uh, to do. I'll do the Nordics last. They're not going to join any wars anytime soon. Kind of don't want Yugoslavia in. Czechoslovakia will bypass, as will this one. I need to go for control the Bosporus. Hungary seeds. They are now in a personal union. Hello, EU4. October 39, Paris has already fallen and France is gone. Defend the Czechs and Hungarian alliance bypass because we already took care of those. 
Now I can go for Protect Yugoslavia. I'm not doing anything with relations there because I don't actually want them in my faction. I am for improving relations with Turkey and placing my diplomat there. Soviets are late with justifying. That's fine. We have the time. I really want Turkey in my faction, so I'm going to do the decision to influence Turkey first. Diplomatic mission to Turkey. To give that mission time, I will do prepare for the next war first. Yugoslavia refuses. That's actually not so bad. Prepare for the next war and we can control the Bosporus. See if that works. Come on, Soviets. I'm ready for you. Control the Bosporus is done. And we'll go for North Sea. Soviet Union declared war on Lithuania. Didn't see that one coming. We can join their wars, they'll call us in anyway. Point is, they'll probably also call in the Turks. Ah well, that's their risk. Like I said, ready for them, let's go. It's tempting to just storm in here, but we want the Soviets to storm into us. We can, however, go to war economy and extensive conscription. We also want to get rid of free trade, but we need a little bit more PP. Here's an, inter 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 here's an interesting one. Motorized rocket artillery. I'm going to upgrade my motorized divisions a little. And the Soviets are attacking me. Now that we are at war, we are also going to justify a war goal on Iran. That's one of the convoluted requirements of the bearer achievement, is that we control this province, Habadan. And the best way to do that is to just take it. Latvia has been called in, and Estonia as well. Luckily we had an army there. It's, he's under our offensive field marshal, but he should be fine. And we'll get to work in that final collaboration government now. We'll do the Finnish Polish Act. We don't need to spend too much time on those guys. They will join eventually because the Soviets will declare on them. Green bubbles all around. We're doing fine. Raking up the casualties for the enemy, not for us. We eventually do need to get down to artillery modernization, but we are not in a hurry yet. We'll do, central, we'll do a few of these industry focuses. It's a free-for-all from by now. Finland accepts the invitation and we'll do a diplomatic mission to Sweden. The gun deficit is almost gone. We'll be switching to the better guns now few less factories on them and start building planes as soon as I have those final techs researched. And I've trained a reserve army here. They're a bit greenish. And I'll send them over to help the Turks. They do have to cross this piece of water now. They made it. Help us on the way, boys. This uh, front's looking a bit stale. Let's uh, exercise our troops again. And immediately the Russians take the bait. Looks nasty, all those red bubbles, but you can see them turning green. Our troops are strong enough. This is also the sign to start planning for a possible offensive. Let's get those motorized into position. 
going to attack the tiles next to Minsk, see if I can surround it and then grab it. It's more of a test how weak the Soviets are at this point. Mm, they're putting up a fight, so not that weak. That's central defense of Poland. Way back to the right, we go for invite Sweden. Motorized rocket artillery, yeah, we want that. Let's get railway guns, why not? Dorn deficits are horrible, so we'll go to limited exports. And see what we still need to get. Let's try another encirclement here. And make sure to pin the guys that are trying to get away. They are not getting away. There's also a war goal against Iran ready. And they will join the common turn and enter the peace deal later, much, much later. And another encirclement. We haven't even cleaned up the first one yet. And basically, that's how we're going to continue fighting the Soviets. You pick apart their line, tile by tile, encircling a few troops here and there, until they're too weak to really stand against you. It's a patient job, but I enjoy it. We can do more factory stuff, but we really need to get to artillery modernization, so we'll head into that direction. And Sweden joins. We can finally do that collaboration government. Next up, bigger encirclement. We're going to cut off the entire Odessa region in one fell swoop. Soviet Union demands Bessarabia. Uh, no. Free Kiev. Don't mind if I do. Let's uh, snake some troops out of their supply zone. We have 100% collaboration in the Soviet Union. That means we probably need, just need to reach Stalingrad, Moscow, and Leningrad, and we should be fine. Seems a long way, but once you chip away enough troops, you can pretty much drive there. I want this supply up here, and possibly this one. But these, this is difficult terrain and rivers, so we'll punch in through over here. Should be able to do that even in winter. We also have some air experience, so let's create a fighter model. Going with free heavy machine guns, the best engine, armor plates, and self-sealing fuel tanks. It's an expensive fighter, but it has high survivability, and we're doing this for the long term mostly. Going to promote Sosapovsky here. So I can make him offensive doctrine. So I can make him army offense specialist and I can replace my defense guy for an offense guy. We're doing all the attacking right now anyway. Railway gun. Yeah, let's create a few. Only 10 I think. Finland has capitulated. Sad. We captured the swamps. Let's clear them out. But maybe I can grab Sevastopol. Doesn't look like it. 
No, it's kind of busy here. Let's let's not do that. Soviet Union only has about 103 to 168 divisions left. I outnumber them. After all of this is going to get getting built, I'm going to expand into synthetics, produce my own rubber. German Reich declared on the Soviet Union. Well, they have no borders, so they'll rake up some war score with convoy raiding and bombing. But I should be getting most of the Soviets anyway. I'm getting transports technology. Better to have it sooner rather than later. Now I'm going to slice off a few more pieces of Soviet Union and then I'm going to rush for the big victory points. Something like this. Got Peskov, big supply up to let's guard cut off these Leningrad guards. Naval invasion in the Baltic states. Oops. And it's time to move my motorized into position to grab Moscow, I think. I need to kill a few more troops first. Nah, the Latvians can take care of that. Thing is, with Moscow, there, it's always so far away from other supply hubs. We'll go to uh, Rzev first. Well, that's Rzev, but I don't have a railroad here, so I'll take this one. An empty Moscow. I have to take advantage of that, and I got it. That's unexpected. Usually they have someone guarding it. Well, the next push will be into Rostov and then Stalingrad then, I guess. And then we'll mop up. That's Stalingrad. 97% capitulation and 83% war participation. Well, we should be alright. We'll use the motorized to uh, rush towards Baku. That should um, take care of any victory points we need. And here we are. The Soviet Union has capitulated. There's lots of stuff to do here now. With over 80% war participation, you should be able to get everything. You'd be tempted to puppet the Soviet Union, use their war operations, and if you're going for a slightly longer game, that's still fine. However, we need to have not the Soviet Union in our faction if we are going to get the bear, so we might also annex them. Let's see what's more expensive. Puppeting is more expensive, so we'll annex the lot, possibly liberate them as a collaboration government later. We also need Iran. And those we can puppet. Let's annex the Soviet Union. That's all of the Soviet Union annexed. Well, we can still do war operations and resource rights on Mongolia. And take a ton of them. And the navies. Very, very successful peace deal. Iran is now my puppet. 
the Soviet Union does not exist. Do need to be careful with the Japanese border, but uh, we'll take care of that. And now we can turn our attention to the Germans. We only need to be at war with Italy now and have some troops here, and that's why we were researching transports. We have something of a navy and the Allies are at war here as well, so that should be alright. But it's a bit naive to think that these, well, brave boys with 12 combat with will hold against the Germans. The Soviets have debuffs, especially in an offensive war. Germans have buffs. They are strong. So we need a new template and we need to fill it with our glorious industry. Smart thing to do is to probably create uh, some form of space marine, as they call it, a mixed armor infantry template. Let's create one now. We'll use the basic medium tank chassis. And give them the improved anti-air gun. Light one-man turrets. Something like this. It has high armor and defense. We can even give them some more armor. Quite expensive, but we have the Soviet industry now. Let's focus on these guys for now. Well, we'll juggle this around later. The template itself. Infantry template. We'll add a few more. This should do, and we'll add the anti-air. Now we're not going to use space marines in our naval invasion of Italy. We'll just use the basic infantry template with a few additions of anti-air artillery. And engineers, yeah, this, this will do. Let's justify a war goal on Bulgaria. 21 days. No, we'll never have those space marines ready. We'll have to wait a bit. We'll head into Sicily first. Move our fleets to Turkey. Another good reason to have them in our alliance. Now, to prevent future problems with Japan, they might declare at some point or whatever. I'll just uh, start training some reserve templates for them. As expanding the attack template to give them some artillery and anti-air. I'm also building a collaboration government in the German Reich. 130 days until our deficit is gone and our efficiency will go up. Let's justify... Oh, Bulgaria, 30 days. Uh, we'll wait a bit longer. So once again, this is now the template. Eight infantry battalions and a medium anti-air. We've got them on all the borders. We're not calling in any allies on this one. Yeah, let's get involved. I'm seeing invasions left and right. I want to be the one to invade Italy. <clears throat> Justification for Sofia is complete. Let's declare war and hope they call in the Germans and Italians. German Reich has joined. Italy has joined. Did my naval invasion launch? It actually did. Let's uh, get some uh, protection from the Allies. Ask for military access. Are the USA in? Oh, here we go. Probably should improve this one here. And build radar. Should have done that a while ago. We're actually landing here. And we got a port.
And there we have Sicily. Seem to have lost tiles here. You can tell because my troops are trying to attack back into them. But other than that, we're holding. Let's see if we can cut, cut off the Konigsberg pocket here, but I don't have tanks of my own. The anti-air SPGs are built, so I'll just um, scale this down and start building my own tanks in the improved medium chassis. Don't think we'll be able to hold Poznan for long. We just have to make sure we're not getting encircled. And move the fleet to support. And hopefully the allies will help as well. Green bubbles all around. The Poznan area is vulnerable. But I do believe we can hold it. Air Force is doing all right, trading fairly even. Why am I happy with that? Because, well, I'm using less planes than they are. That's about the same. Heavy counterattack here. Should be able to hold. Naval division to Italy is ready. We don't have the naval supremacy, but the allies might swing by and give us a hand. We'll just wait for that while we pay attention here. Vichy France gets dragged in. Quite a few medium tanks already, so we'll expand the existing motorized with medium tanks. And we'll just add whenever I can add them. This will effectively turn them into tanks now, but they are smallish tanks. All hands on deck to Poznan. I may have attacked the Germans a little too fast. This is uh, dicey. Oops, my naval invasion is launching into Rome itself. We have actually captured Rome. I have no reserve divisions to help out with Italy, so these guys will have to do. Hopefully the Italian Civil War will break out soon. And technically we have met all the requirements for the bear to appear. So that should happen any moment now. When I look at the requirements for the bear, I do need this country to be at war with Italy. So I'm just calling in Iran and we should be fine. Successful. I actually cut off Konigsberg. Well, it's not a pocket just yet. I mean, it's the size of a small country. We should be able to grab it. And here we are. Whitek never drops a crate. 
Private Wojtek has proven himself a uniquely valuable member of his supply lines. Even during the heat of combat, small arms fire brushing the hair on his head. Arms and legs, he did not drop a single crate of munitions. This brave soldier ensured our artillery could keep firing and was thereby instrumental in defeating the enemy. As a result of this, it has been decided that Wojtek should be promoted. May we all take inspiration from his bravery. Here he is, the bear, the bear. We'll replace that Romanian guy who looks like a kid, and he is now one of our generals. We could grind him a bit and then make him a field marshal. Konigsberg is encircled. I'm fully convinced that this trick will eventually not work anymore. And with trick I mean just emptying out the troops and leaving the port for the enemy so they can reinforce it. I'm sure it will be patched at some point in the near future, but until then we can still use it to just finish this war a little quicker. Let's get Memel back. This is also a very nice pocket. Casualties, 144k, brave Polish. Four hundred K Italians, two and a half million Germans. Speaking of Italy. Mussolini is deposed. Here's the civil war. Moment of tension, yes, Italy is my puppet. Yeah, sure, transfer to territory. Wojtek wounded, no! Also slowly replacing the motorized with mechanized in my divisions. And can I add some more medium tanks? Yeah. It's getting a big division, so I also added logistics. Germany is getting a bit boxed in here. France is under revival. Berlin surrounded. No, not too many units. But it's fine. The fall of Berlin, the Polish juggernaut, cannot be stopped. And there goes Germany. Collab government complete. We get the event for a collaboration government now. Yes, we can. Polish Germany. In a nice pink color. Let's redistribute the troops and get things over with. Technically, this already gets you the no more partitions achievement, I think, because Germany no longer exists or is in your faction. They are in the Miezemore. And here we are, Bulgaria capitulates and we have a peace deal. We also got the most points, but we already have Germany and Italy as puppets. Um, just make sure Italy gets the rest of its cores and grab whatever you want for Germany. Don't forget your old cores to take them back. Here they are. And there we are, Polish Italy, Polish Germany. Kingdom of Poland, Romania could make it Polish Russia, but uh, it looks fine like this. For some reason, I managed to not get Kashubia, which is now a British puppet. Well, that makes me easier to get a war goal against him. I thought I clicked it, but I must have made a mistake. German Reich is left alive in Bohemia. No one bothered to liberate it. Oh, peace deals. All right. The presence of Germany here, of course, means that you cannot get the achievement. 
No more partitions. Germany still exists. We can take care of that, but we have a truce in um, about half a year. So it'll have to wait. We also want our core back. We want to invade Palestine for the Crusader Kings achievement. Or at least show you how that's done. That's not too difficult. I'd probably do it as an afterthought after blitzing the UK. So let's first entertain ourselves with this, these guys. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. 125 days. Let's go. There was a welcome surprise. I'm now at war with the Germans because they were guaranteeing Japan. Uh, no troops in position, but that can be remedied easily. Naval invasion isn't launching. Here we go. Skull in Germany. So we can take on Germany. This makes total sense. This is annoying. I still can't complete the achievement because no one has enough points to grab Bohemia, so we'll just grab one part and there will be another truce. 99%. Well, I want to be the one holding Tokyo. This will be a worthless Japanese puppet, but uh, no choice. Yep, that seems to be it. Fleets. A few carriers. Poland has carriers now. At least. Yeah, carriers. Polish Japan. Uh, State of Japan. Justifying on Germany. Again, this time I'll be the only one attacking them, I guess. They're guaranteed still by this state of Japan. So I'll be training some Japanese divisions to take care of that. Let's also head into rocket technology. We are, of course, going for that achievement. Here we are. Declare war on the Germans. Actually, call in the Slovaks because they might be able to take their own course and walk in there. Finally, we return stuff to them Moravia, sure, Polish, Czechoslovakia. We're still at war with the state of Japan. State of Japan. They don't appear to have an army. They did intercept me with their navy. Oh, pathetic. Right, so getting rid of Germany finally got me the achievement. No more partitions. There's just Crusader Kings and the Rocket Technology one left. I don't really have to show the Rocket Technology, but this game will go on long enough to, for me to show it. Because I'm going to grab Palestine and I want my cores back. So, justify war goal, retake core state. On Gdynia, they are a British puppet and they will fight back. Kowalski and his brave guys that uh, function as Marines will do the classic invasion at Hull. 
I also have some actual marines here. They will take Palestine and try to hold it. That'll be difficult enough. I'll reinforce them with uh, Space Marine armies to um, hold those lines. And then when I feel brave enough, I will call in the Germans and smash the Western Allies. Denmark is also a Western ally. Hmm. Well, here is the war justification for Gdynia, my core state. Let's declare war immediately. And see how lucky we get on either of these war uh, naval supremacies. Eastern Mediterranean zero. We, we had a fleet there. We're launching into the Mediterranean and we're launching into the UK, so it's kind of busy at both ends. Uh, best stop exercising, boys, and get back behind the river. Lots of allies in Denmark. Let's grab our core. And send the tanks over there as well. Well, we have landed in Jerusalem, or at least we're about to. Let's send in Voitex boys immediately and concentrate on the UK. And there's Jerusalem, the Crusader King's achievement is mine. I mean, if I didn't already have it. Wojtek will come in and hold the line. And expand a little. Oh, this is weak. I can't encircle the port because the Germans gave the British military access. Oh well. And that's the UK. They too become our nice creamy pink color. It does look kind of busy here, doesn't it? Let's concentrate all of our air power here and see if that helps. Um, yeah, pretty much got all the borders covered, so here goes. Join me, Germany. Those armor divisions are cutting through the um, allied forces quite nicely. I mean, I have green, yellowish air for the fans. This is the current template. And currently we are under attack. Allies are murdering themselves on my space marines. Or so it would seem Denmark capitulates. That's the first and second of the allies down. This looks fun. I can actually cut through these thick allied lines. It's a bit confusing that all these allies are now helping me here because most of them are not called into the war where have we seen this before huh it's 
getting a bit busy here. This is basically how late game naval games go. They naval invade, and they naval invade some more. And again, they naval invade. Until you either give up or you conquer them. Fall of Berlin. Sorry, boys. I'll fix it. I'm going to stop the recording here. F fair chance you'll see an encore where I eventually win, but I'm not going to commentary, do commentary and uh, record all of this. It will be hours and hours before I'm done. I have this plan for this crazy operation, but it should work. Also doing really well in terms of trades with my fighters and planes. Happy, happy. I'm going to, I broke through the Maginot here. Well, I have the Maginot, so I just broke through here. And I want to reach Jeppe La Havre to cut off all these troops in the lowlands. A tall order to be sure. And that's Paris. Alright, let's do this. Race for the shore, boys. <laughs> Brilliant. I have, well, encircled is a big word, but I have the lowlands. Now I can slowly push them into each other. Best even if I take all the ports, but that's really difficult. I mean, they have Rotterdam, Antwerp, Calais. Also cleaning up some uh, invasions here, but yes, this is going to be a pocket to clean up. Netherlands capitulated. Ooh, that's a nice one. Let's see if we can get that all in one. A tile. Nineteen forty seven, time for an update. Kingdom of Poland Romania has become quite a bit larger. Took out Spain as well. The Allies are just in Norway, and I'm dominating the Atlantic with my subfleet. Almost all these task forces are nicely filled up. I conquered Iceland and Greenland, placed radar, airfields, etc. And now this spaghetti sauce is coming to fruition. So let's put the strike force. Uh, this is going to be an issue, but uh, we'll see. The plan is for the first two invasions to grab the north of uh, northeast of Canada, distracting the Allies from their main coastline. Once those guys are off their ports, I'll send in two more armies, one with actual marines and another one to hit the Boston area and the Norfolk area. Of course, naval supremacy is key, so um, this may or may not work. This one is having serious doubts about the eastern seaport, but this one's ready to go. Since that one is moving, we're here going to grab the 24 marines and send them over to Greenland to take their place. The marine template, by the way, is still this one. Slightly small, but with a lot of support. I'm starting to hammer the uh, allies here. And maybe the subs eventually will be good enough. But I do think we need the ports here to reach the eastern seaboard. Meanwhile, all the way over here, very busy in India. Made some collaboration governments here. Otherwise, this is just too much driving. 
making landfall. If possible, improve the ports immediately. We need more of the province to do that. These guys, guys are just gonna walk into Canada. Eventually they'll get stopped and then we'll naval invade around. Simple as that. Number two, he's ready to go. The eastern seaboard will be invaded. Now that he's going away from Iceland, we can throw in these guys. This is the, the Italian colonial division, very similar to uh, my main attack division. China wants to get into my faction, yeah sure. And India has capitulated. Great news. Is there any cleaning up to do here? More naval invasions. The Marines are here. They are ready. They're going. Third naval invasion into the Boston area. These guys are in position, but not quite ready yet. And Florida coast needs naval supremacy. But our journey into Canada went flawlessly. Losing some convoys here and there. Well, that's a risk we're willing to take. And the Italians are off the fourth naval invasion. And we're landing in the Boston area. Now these are just light marines, so we're going to um, take these space marines we've been saving up and put them in the Boston area as well, as well as this tank division. USA doesn't look too busy yet. Sure, that'll change. However, well, they only have 24 to 61 divisions and I'm like sending 120 over. <laughs> I don't think they're going to make it. Australia assumes responsibility as long as they don't become a major. I don't mind. Yep, Australia became a major. You do have to wonder, at what point does New Zealand become a major? 99% for the USA. And there they go. Let's clean up. And kill Canada. That's Canada. Only Australia left. Well, that'll be a long one. See you soon. 1949. Australia being invaded. Not very successful, I must add. Four, six divisions. Well, nine divisions made it. Do it again! It's been very difficult to get naval supremacy. Like anywhere. Had to actually conquer Malaya and Indonesia to get more ports. Um, aircraft in range. Turks are pulling their weight. This wannabe marine is just Kowalski again. He did get invader, naval invader though. Because he's done so many naval invasions already. Finally! Well, let's start with Kashubia. This is what it started with. Gdynia and Gdansk. They are mine. 
327 states and we are all over the world. Yamidzi More is everywhere, well, except in South and Central America. So that's the end of this glorious campaign. Wojtek has been shown around the world and I've got six hours of footage to edit. So once again, I ask you, if you like this video, please take a moment to press the like button. It really helps me out in promoting this video to other viewers. Thanks a lot and see you next time. Bye bye.